Hi, um, I'm David, and today we will be looking at the examination and classification of the MYH7 gene uh, variant at uh, the position 1988 going into adenine, um, adenine. The reason we're looking at this today is that we have a referral of a 52 year old male diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, who has a family history of the disease, and the echocardiogram shows hypertrophy of basal septum. So very quickly, if we look at the heart as um, a, a two-chamber um, or a four-chamber, um, should I say, um, structure, in the middle, the two ventricles, the left and right ventricle, are divided by the ventricular septum. That septum in septal hypertrophy or hypertro um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, thickens asymmetrically. The, um, the left ventricle wall does not thicken or um, the chamber does not dilate. Thus, the left ventricle is uh, narrowing in this case. Uh, for the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the, the risk of sudden death is about 6% in affected individuals. Um, on the population um, um, scale, however, the risk lowers to 1.5%. And um, this individual had 22 genes associated with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy sequenced using NGS and one of the variants, or the only variant actually, that came back um, was heterozygous variant on the MYH7 gene. Um, which results in arginine 663 substitution to histidine. Now, um, the MYH7 encodes um, a protein called beta myosin, and it is a, it is a cardiac specific um, myosin. The myosins in the muscle um, act as a motor um, on which, um, for which, sorry, um, causes the two Z lines of the sarcomere to come together, thus shortening the sarcomere, the very basic um, unit of um, the muscle fiber, which achieves, this is, this is how the muscle achieves contraction. Now, this is uh, performed by myosin's heads attaching to the actin filaments. So the myosin are the dark bands in the sarcomere and the actin are the light bands of the sarcomere and the myosin head attaches to the actin then upon exchange of ATP to ADP that detaches the myosin changes the conformation twists the head attaches to another point on the actin filament upon hydrolysis of the ATP into the ADP and a free phosphate phosphate and release of this phosphate there is a another conformational change which then causes the um, the myosin head to twist back and then that's um the two z z discs or z lines um come together this is normally uh, this action is blocked uh, by troponin and tropomyosin but upon calcium binding to troponin the troponin changes um conformation again release and um, sort of pulling the tropomyosin out and releasing the um, binding sites for uh, myosin heads. Now the cardiac muscle is a specific muscle because um, you see that uh, this muscle is a bit of an amalgam between the skeletal muscle and the uh, smooth muscle and that is uh, precisely for the function of the cardiac muscle. It is a muscle that has very little rest um, if any and has evolved to be active um, from the very early um, stage of life um, up until to the very end of that life. So it, it, need, it needed to be a bit of, a, a bit of an amalgam. But the, um, the myosin, the beta myosin in this case, is um, located on chromosome 14 um, and is composed of about 40, um, not about, exactly 40 exons. The transcript is a single transcript. No um, isoforms have been described. Um, the transcript has 6,027 base pairs, and the resulting protein has 1,935 residues. The variant is located to exon 18, 
and is not um, located to any of the splice sites. So just to show you that um, MYH6, which is the alpha uh, myosin, um, alpha cardiomyosin, which is the primary myosin expressed in the, in the heart, um, those two, when aligned, show the, the conservation of this arginine residue. And then if we look at the MYH7, so beta myosin, only across um, several vertebrates, we can see that in all cases, this um, residue is highly conserved. And in, in fact, it, it is predicted that um, changing this residue might be um, might affect the function. Again, this is just a reiteration that this uh, residue is highly conserved. Um, this region, in fact, is, is very highly conserved across all analyzed vertebrates. According to the Align GVGD database, however, this um, again, we, we see that the GV score is zero, which shows the um, high level of um, conservation. However, the GD score is 28, which is classified as C25, which is not exactly very likely to be um, affecting the function, but it's it's there. It's sort of it's it's more than not not likely. However, if we looked at the polyphen two, uh, we can see that the prediction is that it's possibly damaging. In both um, in both cases, it's it's predicted to be possibly uh, damaging with quite a high um, score. The sift. Um, database, however, predicts that this amino acid substitution, arginine to histidine, is actually tolerated. If we look at the um, at the protein level, this is uh, this is from polyphen, and and you can see where the where the residue is substituted. It does not tell you a lot um, just just by looking at it. However, if you look here, you can see that uh, from the Uniprot database. Um, the, the, the structure on which this residue is, is actually the end of, of, of the alpha helix. And the region um, that it is likely to be on, um, and according to the database, is the actin binding. So we can, we can conclude then that any alternation in this, um, in this uh, can, can affect, in fact, the actin binding, the binding um, of the uh, myosin head to um, to the actin. Now, from the population um, databases, we see that the prevalence or the allele frequency in this case is actually very low comparatively to the amount of um, allele numbers, um, and is mostly described in the European but non-Finnish um, population. And the genome add actually. Um, is in agreement with this. There is um, more um, allele uh, counts in this case, twice as much, uh, twice as many, um, all from European non-Finnish um, non-Finnish origin, and then allele frequency is, is um, also um, it's a little bit lower, but um, in agreement. And um, the site quality metrics also show um, that it's a very high um, high quality data. Finally, if we look at the clin, um, clinical um, clin, um, ClinVar sorry, database, we can see that the number of submissions is significant um, for this variant to be interpreted as pathogenic or likely pathogenic for all kinds of um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, including familiar hypertrophic cardiomyopathy one. And um, just just to sort of finish with some uh, perhaps um, with just sorry I just put um, some sort of a message that my recording will end soon. So the functional data on the immune um, induced pluripotent stem cells in human shows that the uh, this variant causes multinucleation and also the contractile phenotype includes arrhythmia, arrhythmia. So in this case,